diagnosis of the HIV infection or AIDS. After the viral entry, there is a window period of 10 days, sign symptoms resembling the features of infectious mononucleosis. Clinical features starts appearing on day 11 and then antigen P24 appear on day 16. Immunoglobulins first IgM starts appearing on day 22 and then IgG starts going up and maintains a peak in 3 months. So 95% of the patients have antibody in 1 month and 99% in 3 months. Plasma P24 antigen level increases before the increase in anti-HIV antibodies. So plasma P24 is the first to increase. So I repeat the window period is of 10 days. Clinical features appear on day 11 and 95% have clinical features in 6 weeks. Then P24 antigen appears on day 16 as here clinical features appearing on day 11 and the P24 antigen appearing on day 16 and then IgM. The acute phase lasts from about 2 weeks to 2 or 3 months and then there is a latent period of about 2 to 10 years and then the virus increases and there are opportunistic infection leading to the death. HIV virus is increased and CD4 cells are markedly decreased. In advanced disease there is leukopenia thrombocytopenia, lymphopenia, the low CD4 cell count and CD4 to CD8 ratio is less than 1. So patient must have a CD4 count of less than 200 cells per cubic millimeter. Lymphopenia, low CD4 cell count and the ratio CD4 to CD8 is less than 1. There is hypergamma globulinemia due to immune activation, due to B cell stimulation by the EB virus. Now the screening test is ELISA or enzyme immunoassay EIA. It detects antibody for both HIV-1 and HIV-2. It becomes positive for anti-GP-120 antibody. The test is highly sensitive, more than 99%, but lack specificity, especially in immunized patients with tetanus toxoid and influenza and other vaccines. So the screening test ELISA detects antibody for both HIV-1 and 2 for anti-GP120 antibody. It's a highly sensitive test, more than 99% positive, but lack of specificity in the immunized patient with TT and influenza. EIA, enzyme immunoassay detects antibody for both HIV1 and HI2, and it detects separate HIV-1 and HI-2 antibodies and antigen results. Causes of false positive are antibodies to HLA antigen. Multiple transfusion may also cause false positive results and recent influenza immunization. False negative ELISA occur in, in recent infection when there is a window period in the first 10 days. It may give a false negative ELISA result when there is hypogamma globulinemia, advanced HIV infection. Now confirmatory test for the A is western blood test. So what does it do? It confirms the HIV infection by becoming positive for different types of antibodies to HIV infection like HIV-1 and HIV-2. Western blood test detects antigen in samples using specific antibodies that react with the HIV antigen. In the western blood test there are antibody bands against the antigens of HIV. The test is positive when there is presence of any two bands against P24, P41, GP120, 160 antigen of HIV. The test is negative when the bands are absent and indeterminate if any other combination of bands is present. 95% of patients have antibodies to HIV by 4 to 6 weeks and more than 95% have zero converted by 3 months. Now HIV blood test. HIV blood test detects actively dividing viruses and is more sensitive test for the diagnosis of acute HIV infection. HIV can be cultured from the tissues, blood and plasma. So the HIV blood test detects actively dividing virus and is good for the diagnosis of acute viral infection. The nucleic acid test, NAT test or RNA test. The NAT test detects HIV in the blood. 
10 to 30 days after exposure to HIV. It's also known as polymerase chain reaction. Protocol for HIV testing and diagnosis. Screening test EIA detects antibodies for both HIV 1 and HIV 2. As I already mentioned, positive in 6 to 10 weeks for anti-GP antibodies is highly sensitive in more than 99.5% of cases. So if this screening test is positive, the then HIV tested in western blot test. If HIV 1 is tested in western blot test, if positive diagnosis confirmed for HIV 1 infection. So if the screening test and western blot test are positive for HIV 1 test, the diagnosis is confirmed. If HIV 1 western blot test is negative, then perform the HIV 2 EIA and the screening test and if the test is positive, HIV 2 western blot test is done. So if that's positive, then the diagnosis is confirmed found for HIV 2 infection. If in this case, if HIV 2 western blot test is negative and if clinical features are positive, repeat the test in 3 to 6 months or repeat the screening test in 3 to 6 months for both HIV 1 and 2. So here is the pictorial picture. The screening test HIV 1 and HIV 2. HIV 1 tested if positive. HIV 1 western blot test done if positive. Diagnosis confirmed for HIV 1. If the test is negative, or if the western blot test for the HIV-1 is negative, then HIV-2 western blot test is done. If positive, the diagnosis is confirmed for HIV-2 infection. If negative, repeat the screening test in 3 to 6 months for both HIV-1 and HIV-2.